Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, in today's tutorial, we are going to create a server using dev underscore appserver.py. Um, this requires Google Cloud to work. And this is the end result that we're going to have. As you can see here, the website we have is localhost 8080. And we're just going to print out hello world. Um, this is the dev underscore appserver.py. It runs off Google Cloud. And to test that we have it installed, this is an tutorial on how to install it so I'm, I'm hoping you already have everything set up correctly and then we're gonna go ahead and get started but first I want to actually read a poem to you this is found on a tombstone um, I made a link right here and we're not gonna go over how to create links or anything in this video but you'll basically forget that yourself and I'll, I'll make a tutorial on how to create links later on and other pages to your website as you can see it goes through this page called slash about but this tutorial is not about that I just want to read this quick and uh, easy poem because it's, it's pretty important in my opinion on a tombstone stop traveler and cast an eye as you are now so once was i prepare in time make no delay for youth and time will pass away as i am now so shall you be prepare yourself to follow me and this poem is basically written on a tombstone what is scary about this is that you know it's basically about death and every day I feel like I am getting older. So, um, so let's get go ahead and get started. We're not going to make this entire thing about philosophy, but I just wanted to show you that as an example. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these files. I'm just going to move them to a different folder, um, old stuff. So I'll make a folder called old and just put them in there. And this is what we're going to start off with. Um, we're just going to create a file from scratch. If we refresh the page now gonna say it's not working because there's no files inside this folder and we're going to create all those files over again but instead of three files we're just going to create two I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, command prompt right here as well actually and let's go ahead and create a new file so we're going to create one of them is going to be called the app.yaml file and this will basically have all of the apps information in it we're going to go ahead and open it the first thing that's on it that's going to be on this app.yaml file is application but before I actually add that I need to create the second file it just makes things easier later on so you can create any Python file with any name that you want I'm gonna name it name main.py you can name it something like whatever.py if you wanted to but we're gonna call it main.py in this tutorial video and so the first thing you're gonna write down into the into the app.yaml file because I went back in there this is the app.yaml we're not going to write any Python code in here. We're just basically going to specify what the app is about. First thing we want to do is write application, and this is basically the name of the application. So once you up actually upload this uh, program into the internet, it's going to be called whatever application you gave it. And I'm just going to give it a name of um, app test because that's, that's what this is. This is, this is simply just a test. So application is app test, and the next thing we're going to write is the runtime. You can there's like a few different choices you can write um, to actually get the full list. You want to create an intentional error message, which I'll do in a second, to come up with a different list of all the Python runtimes you can run. But the most common two are going to be Python and Python 27. I believe if you just write Python, it's going to default to Python 3.5 or Python 3.6. And if you do Python 2.7, it's going to default to 2.7, obviously. And the next line after this is we're going to do so runtime, it's going to be Python 27, and the next thing is API version. This is the version of your app, and I'm going to call it version 1. This is based, this is a, so let's say you make another upgrade to your app, you're going to call it version 2 or version 3 or version 1.1 1 .1 or something. But since we're starting off at the very first version, we're going to call it version 1. And then the last line is going to be a security or maybe a, a website handling thing. It just makes things more efficient if you do thread safe if it's true. I have never tried it. Well, I actually have tried it with false and I never really noticed any difference. So that's why I say it is a security measure or it's, it's a efficiency measure. The default thing everyone leaves it, at is, leaves it as at is true. So I just leave it at true. Then after that, we're going to define the handlers, and we just type in handlers over here. I made a space over here because you can actually add multiple handlers, and we're just going to add one in this tutorial video, but you can add as much as you want. So first thing you do with the handlers is you, is you specify URL, 
and it's kind of backwards. Um, you specify the URL first, and then you specify the script that's associated with that that runs through the URLs instead of having a script and then URLs where the script runs off. Of. So we're gonna just say slash dot and then asterisk. This means this is reg regular expression. What it does is the dot is a symbol for any character and the asterisk is a symbol for um, any number of times to the item previous. So it's going to look for any num any character inside of this default folder any number of times because of the asterisk. And if you search for a, if you search for something like a asterisk, it's going to look for a any number of a's. So if, if the name is something like a a a a, it's going to count. But since we're just doing any character with any name, we're going to do slash dot asterisk. And then the next line, we're going to specify the script like I mentioned before. And this is going to be the script where the program runs off of. It's actually the same exact name as the name that we created right here. So we created main.py. We're going to call it the same exact thing, except instead of .py, we're going to put app. And this all, all this stuff might be confusing, but this is these are things that people don't really understand that well. Um, people, The thing is, you just have to write this if you want your program to work correctly, it's not something you need to understand fully. You need to give your app a name, you need to give it the runtime, a version of the app, thread safe equals true, and then you give it the handlers. I think it's all pretty straightforward after that, but you just need to specify this information if you want your code to run. So we have our app.yaml file completed, and I'm, I'm just rereading it now, and I don't see any errors, so this should be good to go. Now we're going to edit the main.py file. Inside of this file, we are going to import web app 2. So it is a module in Python, or not Python actually, it's a module inside of gcloud that can only be run in gcloud. So for example, I'm going to open a command prompt here and then I'm going to try to, to import G web app 2 into Python. So I'm going to have an import web app 2. It's going to say error, no module found. That's because you need to be running the server for it to work properly. and it's, you're not going to be able to run the code locally without running the server, so it's just, just ignore, or don't ignore, but you just need to add in Web App 2. Even though your code editor might give you an error because you don't have this module on your computer, it's actually working fine because you just need to run um, dev under, you just need to run gcloud for it. All right. so the next thing you want to do is you want to specify the app, and you actually do have to call it app if you give it a, a different name like app2, or if you give it a name like whatever, it's going to say it's going to error out on you, so you're going to have to give it a name of app. And then you're going to have to set it equals to um, webapp2.wsgi application. Okay? And then inside of it, it takes in a few different arguments. One of the arguments that it takes in is going to be the, um, the list of tuples. So this is going to be the list of handlers for this website. And inside, as you can see, I created a list right here, and I just created a space so I can type in all the handler side. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take in different tuples. So I'm going to create a tuple and the first parameter of this tuple is going to be or the first value actually is going to be the website that you want to refer to. So I'm, I'm calling it slash because I want it to default to the default page to the first page that on localhost 8080 and if I want it to be for example slash about I would type in slash about like that. But since I don't I just want it to be the default um, we're just gonna have it like this. So default localhost is gonna this this is gonna default to this. Okay, and then we're gonna have to create a class. This this part hasn't been created yet, but that's what we're gonna do right now. So we're gonna call it main page, and you can give this any name that you want. It depends on depending on the class that you create, and we're going to go ahead and create that class right now. So we're gonna create a class called main page, and then we're gonna inherit from web app to dot request. Handler, and this is how you create the class that the, that uh, GCloud works off of. So inside of here, we can then write down commands that like like display things on the website and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, create the init function, and the init function for for the web app too is actually the get function. So since it's, it's inheriting from request handler, we just have to create a new class called get, and the inheritance will take care of the rest. It will understand that the get is actually the init, and it's going to display everything on the page. So we're going to do self dot response dot out dot write, and this will display 
any text that we type in here is going to be displayed on the website. So we're going to type in hello world, and I'm actually going to close that in h1 tags so it can be a little bit larger and can be a little bit more prominent. And this is basically going to display hello world on the website. Um, so now this is everything that we need. This is all that we have for um, for main.py, and this is all that we have for the app.yaml file. This is everything that we need to get the server up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and open the command prompt again. And I'm doing this real time, so if there's any issues, we're going to go ahead and, tro and troubleshoot that real time. But I'm, not, I'm guessing there isn't any, so I'm just going to go ahead and start running it. Okay, so dev underscore app server, and then I'm going to type this in dev underscore app server dot py, and then I'm going to type in a dot to refer to this current directory. I'm going to hit enter, and it should run, and looks like we have no errors. So I'm going to refresh the page, click on refresh, and it says hello world. And that is the tutorial, guys. We just displayed um, what I said I was going, what, what we said we were going to display on the website. Um, something else I want to discuss was this part right here, where it says Python 27. I'm going to go ahead and change it to like Python 36. It's going to 100% say error on me. If I try to refresh, it's not going to say anything. But if I close the server down, and then I try to restart the server again, it's going to say error. And then it's going to give me a list of all the possible um, run times and it looks like there's custom, there's go, there's java, java 7, java 8, php 55, python, python compat, dash compat, and then python 27. So um, whatever runtime you want to use, you just type in here. I'm using python 27, so that is the one I am going to stick with. I've actually never tried it with python regular. I wonder if it will still work. I'm going to test, I'm going to test it out to see if it works. Um, let's see, my error or something, I have no idea. I'm actually going to change the uh, code a bit. I'm going to add an S to the hello world, so it's going to say hello worlds. I'm going to refresh, and it looks like it works fine. So Python and Python 27, from what we wrote, it makes no difference, but I, I generally just write in Python 27. So I'm going to keep it at Python 27. Um, I guess that's really the tutorial for now, guys. Uh, there's not really anything else I want to add. Um, so, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to post a comment. I will try to help you out. And um, post what kind of tutorials you want in the future. Like, if you want to create, you want a tutorial on how to install this thing on your computer, like Google Cloud. And I might go through a tutorial on that because it, t it took me like an entire day to install it. And I was, I, I went through path variables, environmental variables. You saw a police car go by. Path variables, environmental variables, and um, and the reg edit. So I went through a bunch of different things to try to try and get Gcloud working. So if you want to tutorial on that, post a comment. I will actually uninstall my Gcloud and then reinstall again to, to go through the process. But I'm not doing that unless there's like a good amount of demand for it. And um, also that that thing on the first page you saw where it's like click here and then display that poem. I will go through that in the next tutorial on this channel. So subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again guys for watching. This is like one of my first YouTube videos on this channel. So yep, stay tuned for more. Thanks.